Hello everyone, welcome to the new tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to see how to output JSON from LLMs using prompts. Of course, OpenAI has introduced function calling, which is more suitable to output JSON that can be input as parameters to other functions downstream. But in this tutorial, we are going to focus more on how to output JSON as an array of uh, dictionary elements, etc., which might be more suitable to building apps and any downstream tasks. Without further ado, let's get started. The link to this collab notebook can be found in the video description below. Some of the concepts that are discussed in the video are from my own experimentation from question.ai and some from uh, type chat. So first we have OpenAI set up here where uh, just go to OpenAI and uh, Get, grab the key probably you can create a temporary key if you want and I am entering the open a key here and we are going to use uh, open a's chat GPT API today in order to do our exper experimentations and I have some base text here Elon Musk has shown he can influence the digital currency market and we are going to build an FAQ generator, frequently asked questions from this text. So this text is not too big, probably 600, 700 words. Let's initialize this as the base text that we are going to use. Now, instead of using the OpenAI library, Python library, we are going to use the REST API directly because library could be bloated because of several reasons and I usually prefer to use REST API directly so that uh, there's no other library installations, pip installations or another or other bloatware that comes with uh, library for example even for training it might include some other packages we don't really need to deal with that so this is the chat GPT URL openai.com slash v1 slash chat slash completions and uh, you need to initialize chat gpt headers like this authorization bearer and the openai key that we entered here that's what we got here now let's begin with our json prompts so first thing is why do we really need json output from llms why can't we you know just get the output and directly use that uh, let's understand that with a real world prompt so here whatever text that we initialized here i'm creating a prompt like this the text goes here all the text then there is a separator generate count faqs for example five or three here i'm giving count as three so generate three FAQs, frequently asked questions from the above text, generate a question and a corresponding answer. And I'm creating the messages that we need for chat GPT here, which is basically role system content. And you are an experienced FAQ creator. That's the message that I'm creating. And we have role user content. And that's where we give the prompt. And this is the actual payload. So chat GPT payload where I'm using the GPT 335 Turbo 16K model with messages passed from here and temperature and top P, etc. You can play with these parameters. But at the end of the day, you have some text, a separator. Then I am asking to create some FAQs. It should have a question and an answer. And let's run this and see. So simply passing the chat gpt url the payload that we created and the headers that we created to the request library and we are getting the json response back and we are extracting the content from here which is from response choices zero message content that's where the output is so as you can see it decided to output it like this which is Q1, A1, Q2, A2, Q3, A3. Now, if you see the output, there is no clear way to parse and 
there is no clear way for us to always get the same output one thing is you need to use regular expressions regex to get qa these uh, simultaneous qas that we got here three of them and put them in some kind of list or some kind of dictionary etc so it's not very clear and secondly will this always be capital q1 or will it be question 1 answer 1 question 2 answer 2 we don't know how it's going to be formatted because we gave question and answer next time it might even come as q u s t i o and question 1 and answer 1 etc so there is no control on how the output is why do we need this in a structured format let's go and see in my app question.ai for example you choose faq 5 faqs and click on submit the thing is we have question and answer here just like how we got there but we need them in structured format because we want to show each question and answer as a card and probably you want to enable editing of question and uh, you know editing of answer probably etc so you want this output to be very very structured so that you can manage how the ui is built on top of that that's why we need structured output now there are multiple ways you can choose the xml route or json route but most people might be comfortable with json so probably we can take the json route in this tutorial so you understood why we need to output this data in a structured format and in our case perhaps we'll choose json because we cannot always be aware of what this format will be whether there will be a colon etc so let's move from this unorganized format that we output to somewhat organized format so let's change the same prompt a little bit so we again have text and separator generate count we initialized as 3 so generate three faqs generate a question and an corresponding answer strictly output in json format as a list of dictionaries each dictionary should have two keys q and a so q for a, a question and a for answer so strictly output in json format as a list of dictionaries this is what we are giving we are adding to the prompt and we are also saying what should the keys be q and a so let's run this and see the prompt is same the messages payload everything etc awesome now we gave the count as 3 and we got it in perfect json format because we asked for a list of dictionaries we got this list of dictionaries and q and a are the keys question and answer so perfect so this got us almost close to what we want now this works perfectly in a lot of cases but uh, can we even make this better because we are just instructing how the format should be but we are not actually showing what the format is can we make this better which is instead of speaking can we even show how the format should be and that is when we are using uh, that is where we are updating this with template suggestion what i mean by that is this let's look at this prompt generate again three faqs strictly output in json format the json should have the following format here we are explicitly defining how the format should be which is we have sample json then we have this array and we have dictionaries question and answer we are just you know this needs to be filled by chat gpt so we are just giving three ellipses as a placeholder so here we are explicitly showing that this is how the format should be so there shouldn't be any deviation from this and this is how we want the output strictly to be of course you can give it here just q and a but just to show difference from previous i am just giving full question and answer now let's run this amazing you can see that we have this array again 
again we have question and answer question and answer so instead of just telling it what the output is like we did in second which is json output with llms zero shot json output with llms we actually went a step ahead and used our template suggestion and one thing to note here is since this is not pure text if you just try to add it with prompt prefix and create the full prompt with this and this it's going to error out so we need to con convert this json into string so we are using json dot dumps dumps to convert this into stringify this json basically and uh, this is great we even showed how the prompt should be what the output format should be and we got pretty close but can you even take it further which is essentially can you even define type hints or type script types for example let's uh, for simplicity uncomment uh, this thing and see so type script is basically javascript with uh, strict type formatting the thing is this takes less amount of tokens than this and is probably much more stricter than the above because here we are saying strictly output in json format the json should have the following format and again we are showing what the format should be in the form of typescript interface what that means is in front end development in order to make sure that everything is strictly typed and we know what is the input and output we use typescript on top of javascript to strictly define what the input and output should be so we create interfaces in front end development you know you don't need to be aware of that you can just assume that this interface the response where data is the key and we have an array where question and answer are strings and uh, we have an array of these dictionaries so this is what this is defining so this is even more strictly defined than the previous case where we had suggestive output here we are strictly defining what the output should be and now let's run this and see how the output is awesome you can see that we have strictly created the data should be the element which should have the array so we have these question and answer array clearly within the data element and we are strictly defining to output in json format and follow this typescript interface so we are essentially defining how the output should be now instead of using typescript we can also use python type type hints essentially python introduced you know type hints in the recent versions where you can strictly define what the output should be so sample interface with python is basically you have a class of question and answer where each one is question and answer now you have a list of that class again with data as the output now let's run this and see how the output is awesome you can see again the output is again with data key you have an array with question and answer so again we are strictly defining what the output should be and we are asking llm not to deviate from this so you can use typescript or you can use python type hint format whichever is convenient to you and now let's come to the final part which is this is great you are asking how to output the json but if you have something complex where you want to give few examples as well essentially you want to do few shot prompting which is you want to show what the input should be and what the output uh, json should be and you want to show some examples that is do few shot prompting so that the llm gets better at understanding what you exactly want so showing examples makes it more explicit so that is why we are doing this few shot json prompting now i've changed the format a little bit let's look at this generate the given count of faqs frequently asked questions from the text 
generate a question answer and corresponding context we are making this even more complex because apart from faqs we also want to know from which context that faq is generated so one or two lines from the whole text that we give from which that faq is generated so that we can verify whether that faq is factual or not if we really extract the context from the original text strictly output in json format and here i am giving few short examples here consider it just one shot where i have hash 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 it's good to always have separator and i gave some text which is google is acquiring the dataset community kaggle etc now i am asking the count how many questions i want that is faqs i want and output colon this is where i will generate the output now i have generated the output as well because i am showing some examples this is a this is how the output is again it's an array and you have a list of dictionaries with question answer and context so when was when was kaggle founded 2010 is the answer it is taken from this sentence so i am outputting this sentence as the context as well to factually verify whether this question and answer are correct again how many data scientists are, are on kaggle's platform half a million again i am giving the context so i am giving an example of how the input should be that is text combined with count and how the output should be now i have created a prompt prefix which is generate some faq strictly output in json now what you can do is now you can pass in your inference example text that is the real world text that you want to dynamically generate the number of questions from again hash 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 placeholder for text and placeholder for count now you create the prompt which is prompt prefix then your few short example remember that since this is an array we are just converting again into json um, stringifying the json here so sample1 plus json dot dumps sample1 output json now if you have let's say one more example here which is too short you can do the same thing which is sample1 plus sample2 plus json dot dumps you can further add it here and finally you are just doing a new line and you are giving your inference example text that you can see here this is where the text is dynamically passed in here we are again pass, passing in the elon musk text that we previously have dynamically here now we have few short example awesome you can see the output again let's just print it more clearly the question the answer and context question answer and context so we created three question answer context awesome now the beauty is that you can go ahead and uh, change the count and output a different number of questions and uh, sometimes what you need to do is if you don't get the output json try to rerun it again so have probably two or three retries so that's one tip which is if you want json output and try to do a json dot loads on the output that you got in case if that fails that means that the json is not correct so you need to go back and rerun it so in production use cases probably have two or three retries so that in uh, so that even if the first try fails you get the output in the second try and the user doesn't know the difference they can use the app comfortably and the second thing is for example if you have extremely long context for example chat gpt 16k can take 16k tokens as input now if you are outputting json which is just three question and answers or faqs and if that fails instead of rerunning the whole thing what you can do is you can create another prompt if json dot loads output fails because what happens is sometimes it generates three q and a's but in the end it might miss a let's say an a closing bracket or something like that now instead of you rerunning the whole thing again which will cost 
entire 16k tokens or 10k tokens you can rather correct the json output with another prompt which might be json corrector prompt then if there is a missing bracket etc that will be fixed and it doesn't cost you more so for use cases where the input prompt is extremely long try to have a try to do a json dot loads on the output json that you get and if that fails try to do a fix json fixer to see if there are minor issues that can be fixed because that those tokens will be less and if that fails as well then try to rerun the prompt so essentially we have seen in these five sections why do we need json output from llms and how can we go from uh, unstructured output to json output zero shot that is just by instructing now can you instruct with template by showing how the json output should be and can you instruct and also make it strict with python type hints or typescript types and secondly if you want to make it even more complex or want to sh show the llm how the exact output should be can you include few short prompts to it as well that's what we can see here that's it for this video thanks for watching